वेलकम टू द रियाक्ट नेटिव इंट्रोडक्शन रियाक्ट नेटिव इज़ अ वेरी मच पॉपुलर प्लेटफॉर्म विच इज़ यूज टू डिवेलप मोबाइल एप्लीकेशन सो वी एक्चुअली डिवेलप हाइब्रिड एप्लीकेशन विच मीन्स दैट वी राइड वन कोड एंड दैट कोड विल बी यूज टू पब्लिश आवर एप्लीकेशन फॉर डिफरेंट प्लेटफॉर्म्स सच एज आई ओ एस एंड एंड्रॉयड सो इन इंट्रोडक्शन वी विल एक्चुअली डिस्कस वाई वी नीड हाइब्रिड एप्स वाई कंपनीज hire hybrid app developers uh, why we choose react native what is the comparison between react js react native and how actually react native works uh, what are the development options how and which type of environments we can use on and we can choose to develop our react native applications so first discuss why a company or someone needs hybrid mobile application so actually if you are developing an application which is for iOS or android and you are providing the application for both platforms we need to hire separate developers for iOS and android we need to design our application the layout of the application separately we also need to code those applications separately and when we need to upgrade our applications we need to do the changes in uh, different code base in iOS and in also android so mostly in iOS they use uh, xcode and they use uh, uh, swift language for uh, for android development normally java or kotlin is used so 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 they need to update their application separately so companies reduce their development cost and they hire one developer that actually can develop hybrid application there are several options available for hybrid applications development hybrid mobile application development such as xamarin such as ionic and react native is one of those so that's why it is preferred to hire one developer so whenever there is change the you, you you change your code you change your design you change your layout the behavior of your application in one code base and then you can publish your application for iOS and Android so that's why there is a quite much requirement and the boom of hybrid mobile app developers flutter is also one of the examples that is backed by google and uh, there are it's new but there are some new versions are coming up and it's actually a complete framework and people actually uh, learn flutter as well to develop hybrid mobile applications so why react native uh, react native is actually based on uh, react js so it's their slogan that they say that learn once write anywhere so that's the concept of react and react is based on javascript and if you know javascript you can actually uh, quickly start learning react native you need to have a uh, very small knowledge of uh, react js because react native actually uses react js and uh, the same structure and the components and the state and props and redux these are the concepts which are used in react native and these are actually the concepts of react js so basic knowledge of react js would be helpful and that is actually react js itself is a javascript based library and similarly uh, once you learn javascript you can write front end or the client end languages you can develop your web apps you can develop your mobile hybrid apps and you can also develop server side uh, code and uh, apis and the server side uh, back end development such as uh, using node js using express js which is actually a, a framework for uh, for uh, developing apis Uh, for node platforms so that's why people use react react is quite old backed up backed by facebook <coughs> and uh, they have an uh, it is an open source uh, platform and uh, getting quite mature now and the development environment is uh, uh, quite mature now that's why uh, react is uh, very much uh, preferred there would be any more reason and other reasons as well uh, that's why people choose react native 
so if we compare react and react native so react js is actually javascript library and mainly used to develop or build user interfaces with the help of javascript so in the back end it uses javascript and uh, that's all about the react and uh, provide interactions uh, with the users and uh, you provide, provide an interface uh, and uh, we develop client end applications mainly web based applications uh, with the help of javascript and it actually typically used for the web development and uh, it uses and uh, utilizes all the html elements which are available such as div such as other html elements uh, for example form elements input elements so it actually uses those elements that's why react is not a framework just like angular but react is just a library which actually uh, helps us to uh, build better user interfaces for the web applications it also uh, uses uh, react dom which is a small library which adds uh, web support uh, for um, uh, working with the document object model which is dom so it uses a virtual dom and it actually do the changes in the virtual dom and replaces with the actual dom and do the change it perform the changes wherever the changes are required and it will it actually does all these uh, just in the back end so we don't need to worry about that how things are happen it 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 does by itself so so react is actually uh, mainly used for the web and uh, uh, for the building user interfaces whereas if we compare react native so react native is actually a collection of special react components whereas if we talk about react js so react js uh, it it does not have any special react component so it actually uh, uses html uh, tags and then uh, create and design user interface and although you can convert that into a react component and you can reuse that just for the sake of reusability but in react native it has some special react components what are those react components they are actually components which are compiled to react widget uh, or the nat uh, native widgets um, so so for example if we are looking at the button uh, on a mobile application developed using a react native so when we are developing or adding that button on a screen we actually add that button using a special react component and react native actually translate that button to the native widget for the ios and for the android definitely they, they don't use common uh, widget for this so we have a component which are actually compiled for the for the native widget so these components are already available in react native so we actually use them we add them as a references and then we actually uh, program those components and those components are automatically compiled and we can build user interfaces uh, mobile for mobile applications with the help of react native and there are some uh, native platform apis which are exposed to javascript which means they are actually available for react native so which means that we can develop our uh, applications with the help of some native platform features such as uh, if we want to access uh, hardware resources for example camera for example uh, gps for example bluetooth so there are some certain javascript uh, uh, or the native platform apis available or exposed to javascript and we can use those uh, native uh, features in react native there are some components there would be some uh, hardware resources which are currently not available in react native but mostly available let's say for example let's assume a uh, new hardware is introduced in mobile phones so we actually need to have or we need to write react native corresponding uh, api or the platform should provide native platform api for 
the JavaScript so that we can use that in React Native and React Native application can actually interact with that specific hardware which is recently introduced in a mobile phone. So that's why uh, React Native somehow or the development of React Native is one step behind from the native development. So this is we can consider it as a disadvantage of uh, React Native and uh, this 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 uh, disadvantage is that uh, let's say for example a new feature in a new release of a platform or the new version is introduced and uh, the corresponding widget is not available already in react native so they we need to have someone or the team of react native who is working for react native at the facebook they actually write this co corresponding uh, component, React component, so that component should be translated into uh, Android uh, specific component or iOS component. So uh, that's how actually uh, React Native uh, works. And uh, <coughs> uh, it actually uh, connects your JavaScript business logic uh, uh, with the native platform code so it actually does not directly translate your uh, business logic or your javascript code whatever you write uh, it does not actually convert into swift or objective c for uh, ios uh, platform if we talk about or uh, for the for the java language and it does not actually convert javascript into java or kotlin uh, to to run your application or publish your application for uh, Android platform. So actually, it connects JavaScript with the native platform code. We will see and we will discuss that how actually it happens. So with the combination of React JS and React Native, we actually develop our hybrid applications and we publish our application for iOS and Android platform. So. Uh, React Native alone uh, cannot perform the full job, complete job. It actually uses React. So with the help of React, uh, like the concept of components and JSX and other Redux and state and the props, all those com concepts of React JS are actually used by React Native. So it actually combined together React JS and React Native, and with the help of both uh, React and React Native, we can develop our native mobile application or we can convert our applications into the iOS and Android. So the features of React are also required to develop React Native. React Native, uh, with, uh, by having React JS only, we cannot publish our applications for uh, mobile applica application. Definitely, we can develop our applications in React.js, which are actually mobile responsive web-based applications, but they are actually not actual native applications for mobile, uh, mobile platforms. So actually, React Native uh, uses React.js. Without React.js, React Native alone cannot perform the job to develop your application, although React Native special features are actually used to develop uh, our hybrid applications and we publish our applications for uh, both platforms for iOS and Android. So the concept of React and the features of React are actually used in React Native and we actually build our React Native application. For example, this is a component which actually receives uh, props and uh, props is the concept of react and uh, uh, it actually returns uh, this specific uh, react native code or react native view which is actually a widget in react native or a component in react native which uh, uses to display uh, the the text uh, with the help of text uh, component available in react native so with the combination of react and react native we can actually write our application uh, for uh, mobile platforms so both are actually required to do that and all the views are actually compiled 
into our native application so these are the uh, these are the components which are very much specific to uh, react native you can see that view and text are actually not an html tag they are actually react native components so these components are actually or these views are actually compiled into native code for ios and android and its implementation is already available in react native so that's how actually react native help us to uh, write one code and we can publish our application for multiple platforms if we talk about elements behind the scene so uh, for the web definitely when we are using react it uses it and utilizes html elements and react cannot uh, or does not have its own elements so it actually ultimately using html if we talk about native components for android for example for displaying something uh, view widget is available for native ios ui view is available its corresponding react native component is a view which actually used to display some um, or organize components and we can actually um, put some components inside this view and it works like a container uh, and in ios and android there are some different widgets available similarly for input if we talk about uh, web based uh, uh, react application input element which is a html or html5 uh, tag available or element available so uh, react actually uses that for android for user input we use edit tags for ios a separate uh, input field or component or the widget is available uh, its corresponding translated uh, react native component it is text input so whenever we actually use or uh, uh, utilize components available in react native they are actually directly compiled to native views so for example uh, text inputs for example button so it actually converts or compile into native views but your business logic if we talk about you write your javascript code you uh, make some decisions you put if condition we put uh, for loop we iterate through from a list and we display them on on a screen so that is all you write in javascript so javascript is actually not directly compiled into the native code as i discussed earlier so uh, it actually uh, hosted in a separate thread so which means that whenever we develop our application or a react native application uh, and we publish our applications for the ios and android so our javascript code is not directly converted into corresponding languages such as java kotlin swift objective c it's not converted that instead it actually runs a small react application inside your main application or the native application which is published for the android and the ios platform so actually uh, it is run in a separate thread and uh, it has a jvm and it is not actually directly compiled into 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 java or swift language so it is over there it's in the javascript and it remains in the javascript and it runs uh, inside this so it actually host a small application inside uh, your main application so if we talk about uh, again in a bigger picture so if we have some views uh, which are actually available in react native they are actually compiled and they are available directly in react native and we can actually use that and they are convert they are actually converted into native views but for the javascript code it is not actually converted into any language it actually runs a small virtual machine which actually bridges uh, your uh, native platform apis and when we were talking about that some of the uh, hardware resources and apis are exposed to javascript which means that they are actually interacting with the native platform apis using a smaller bridge 
so with the help of a bridge they actually connect javascript business logic with your native platform apis so that's how actually uh, react native works so uh, we just need to remember that we we have react native components which are actually converted into the platform specific widgets but for the javascript code it's not actually translated so that's that's how actually react native works so it actually uses a virtual machine and with the help of virtual machine it actually connects and it actually bridges uh, your application with the native platform or the apis let's talk about the development environments available for developing react native applications so we can actually create our react native application with the help of expo uh, cli tool and react native cli which is actually available by react native itself so let's uh, discuss uh, both of these options available first we will discuss about the expo uh, which is a third party tool available for developing react native applications so it is uh, uh, very quick to start so it is it has actually managed app development setup uh, we don't need to install any dependency we don't need to have uh, we don't need to install any sdks any other development environment we just need to have node.js installed npm installed and we need to install expo and with the help of expo tool that's why it is called a tool because uh, it provide us all the necessary required development environment with the help of that we can actually develop our application we can run our application we can actually test our application on real device we can also test our application on emulator so it's uh, it's everything available in expo so it is very much convenient uh, to start the development with the, the expo tool but there is also a limitation that we are very much limit limited to ex expo ecosystem expo environment and we are actually limited to, to that so it is very quick to start developing our react native applications but uh, in the longer run we can actually uh, uh, bound to the to the to the expo environment because our application actually loads inside the expo tool and we can actually experience our application inside that and this tool is available on uh, uh, ios uh, on android and also we can uh, use uh, any emulator to test or run our application react native application uh, developed by export CLI tool um, and we can test that another option available is react native CLI <coughs> so that is actually provided by react native team uh, or the communi com community and uh, they actually provided the, all the development uh, uh, environment for this it is actually a bare bone development and uh, uh, only basic setup is available which means that you need to have some knowledge of configuration and setting the environment variables and installations of different softwares connecting them and uh, <clears throat> you need to have some knowledge of uh, uh, like android as well because uh, it uh, directly uh, creates an android project if you are working on windows platform only or the linux linux platform for the help of uh, for the environment of uh, mac uh, you have both options you can actually uh, have xcode installed you can have an android studio installed and you can actually run your application and convert your application directly into that so <coughs> very basic environment is available and uh, uh, it has almost no convenience or utility features available uh, which means that uh, if anything comes up or any bug comes up uh, during the development you need to fix that on your own uh, react native cli is a good environment for those who are coming for the from the xcode uh, the ios and uh, 
android uh, with the help of android Na android studio for the native developers it's uh, it's quite easy and if their environment is already set up but we will go through from both environment and we'll see that how we set up the environments the help of react native cli is that you have full flexibility and you can integrate your uh, even native code with your react native code so you have both code base available in uh, react native cli and uh, th that's how actually it works for the windows users who actually uh, use uh, android studio and they develop your application with the help of react native cli uh, one time the gradle, gradle build and the installations is a kind of hectic task and requires your uh, good internet connection once your project uh, is done and its gradle build is done you can actually run your uh, project directly without having an internet connection with uh, if i compare with the expo cli if you have bad internet connection because whenever you run your project it builds the javascript bundles and it requires internet connection for both development environments for expo cli and react native cli if you are testing your application on your uh, device on your own phone so for this it's necessary that both devices your computer development pc uh, and your uh, physical device both are connected with the same network and uh, for expo cli it is uh, mandatory to have an internet connection enabled on that uh, device where both uh, pc and your hardware um, uh, physical device is actually connected so for react native cli and expo cli it's modeled that you both devices are connected with the same network so they actually bridge together with the help of uh, ip address and then they connect uh, like this so how actually works like i was talking about that your application actually loaded into the expo environment and then it is actually inside that environment which means that you have expo client application so i discussed that you have expo uh, app on your phone on your emulator on your uh, android phone or ios phone so expo client application must be installed it's available on uh, play store apple store you can download that application on your phone uh, for emulator you don't need to download uh, by yourself so when you build your application and uh, run your application on emulator it will automatically install the expo client application on that so your application or code configurations everything is loaded inside expo application so expo applica application actually hosts that uh, react native application and your application is inside that environment which means that your application is not directly available if i talk about android platform uh, it's not directly available as an apk file uh, just like if we develop the react uh, develop the android native application so whenever we develop and test your application on your phone uh, it actually creates apk file and that apk file is available on your phone you can later on launch that application and then you can uh, test that application for the expo client it's not like this which means that your expo server or the development environment must be running and then you can test or experience your application inside your expo client so that is a smaller limitation with the expo but expo has many features available as well with the development you can also publish your application with the uh, as an expo app and uh, the help is that for example you want to test your application for multiple devices so you want to test your application on a physical device such as uh, ios uh, iphone and uh, you want to see that how it looks like on uh, iphone uh, well, if we talk about react native cli development you need to have a mac machine uh, so that you can actually convert uh, the output to the native application and then later on you can test your application in a 
in an iPhone emulator or you test your application uh, on your iPhone. So with the help of Expo CLI tool, you can actually install that Expo, CL, Expo client app on iPhone and also on Android and you can actually test your application easily on multiple devices so you can actually <coughs> build a kind of an uh, uh, let's say for example if if you are uh, going for an alpha testing and you have uh, several users uh, around you and who are actually available in let's say for example in your office or in your company and you want to see that how it looks like on different devices and different resolution and how it behaves so you can actually uh, publish your apps as an expo app and that expo app can be used uh, by um, all the testing team or any any user who is actually willing to test your application on different uh, platforms such as uh, iPhone or uh, Android you can also publish directly your application as a standalone application from the Expo. Expo I also provide this information, this option, and you can do that. And you can also switch to a non-Expo development flow as well, which means that you eject your application from Expo uh, environment, and uh, you can normally you do these steps when you are actually ready to uh, publish your application on apple store or uh, uh, play store google play store so you actually can uh, move your application out of this uh, non-export development flow and maybe you want to combine react native code and you want to actually write uh, some native code by yourself uh, let's say for example for the environment of uh, Android so you want to write some Android native code with the combination of react native so you actually need to move out of out your application from this uh, export development flow so that's how actually expo works and uh, Exp expo is uh, used so that's all about basic introduction of react native and uh, how react native actually works what's the difference and uh, what's the use of react while working with react native in next video we will discuss about the development environment how we set up the environment what kind of options are available when we are developing our react native app how we set up the environment